right welcome back to don't break of course like you can see time for us now to dig deep into our morning conversation as usual we normally take time to discuss very strong and in-depth topics as far as the politics governance and uh, uh, development is concerned remember you can be part of this conversation as usual share in your comments feedback via that number below your screen or you can also move to a social media platform to be specifically tawala facebook like the page then drop your comment and of course we'll be so glad to hear from you like you can see of course my guest is none other than mr frederick okola good to see you sir good morning good morning to you. yeah honorable frederick okola aspiring to be changamo constituency member of parliament come 2022 what are some of his plans going forward what has he have to say concerning the politics around the national and the county level those are some of the uh, questions that i'll be trying to find answers from him but before that moshimiwa of course uh, yesterday we uh, we had the sad story if i may use the word sad and the shocking story of close to 44 uh, teens arrested in um, party orgies somewhere in uh, nairobi county and of course it brought about a, a lengthy conversation online and most people have come out to condemn those actions you as a parent of course and as a leader what can you say concerning the story that uh, has hit most of uh, the media houses in the country one uh, you see my brother it's uh, nice that we are in a world of technology mm -hmm. and technology comes with a lot of issues right uh, it's also good that we have uh, both our children uh, mobile phones, smart mobile phones, mm -hmm. that they are able to communicate variously. Mm -hmm. But again, it is imperative that we also monitor their use of this technology so that it doesn't uh, plunge them into such issues that mm -hmm. we just realized. Yeah? Right. Two, it is also unfortunate that uh, as parents, uh, it's now becoming apparent that uh, parents really neglected their roles long way back. Mm -hmm. And a, a bigger percentage of the parenting role was left with the teachers and children at school. Mm -hmm. And this is only coming at a week where now children have been out of school for long. Uh, that really means parents have neglected their roles and uh, long way back they ceased to monitor and understand how they can really take care of these young Kenyans. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it's, it, it perturbs me that... Uh, uh, at that age, uh, a parent might not be knowing where their children have disappeared to mm -hmm. and uh, now becomes a hunting search that now leads into such a kind of uh, uh, den where people are found closed in a house with a lot of alcohol, ladies and uh, gentlemen, and also with evidence of having uh, engaged in very risky behaviors which mm -hmm. is uh, really absurd yeah? so it really called for us to really uh, try to get our children back to the right morals let us teach our children in the right path so that when they grow up they can also pick up this nation and take it in the right direction right Moshimiwa, but the question will be of course whom, to whom do should we extend our blame to you see, fairly and squarely, the responsibility of parenting relies with the parents. Mm -hmm. It's not the government. This is not a government issue. This is a parenting issue. Right. And uh, we should be able to call a spade a spade. So for the parents who are out there listening and watching, it is good that we all start monitoring our teenagers. Mm -hmm. Let us understand them and let us also guide them accordingly. Let us not give them excess freedom. Let us be able to monitor so that we we are able to know each and every step of their moments as they move. Right. Very true. A very interesting words from my guest, Mr. Frederick Okola, here explaining uh, to us about the horror incidents in the country where 44 teens were yesterday seized in a house party that, of course, they were endeavoring into some bit of funny, funny behaviors and risky behavior, as he has said. But coming to our conversation right now, and we begin by looking at the politics of uh, the national level, Moshibiwa, still on the BBI issue, uh, last week we anticipated the unveilment of uh, uh, the sign collection of the signatures. We had that President Uhuru Kenyatta together with uh, ODM Chief Raila Odinga was set to unveil the signature, the process of collection of signatures. But a um, few hours later, it was called off after the meeting between President Uhuru Kenyatta 
and his deputy William Ruto. Of course, the details concerning that meeting was not unveiled to the media, but of course you as a leader, as a politician, what would you say made it um, uh, to be postponed, if I may use that word, or called off? One, I would wish to state that uh, we are not in a crisis to amend our laws. Mm -hmm. However, it is a timely process that would be good if we had the opportunity and the time. Mm -hmm. Looking at Kenya today and uh, the prevailing situation, right? I think we have much more other things to concentrate on other than BBI. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember in our last show, I did mention uh, that I don't foresee a referendum coming soon mm -hmm. because of the times and uh, where we are as a country today. Right. And so, just to take us, take us back where we are, um, if you look at all the lobby groups, all the stakeholders coming mm -hmm. up and showing their discontent on the, the agency of probably having uh, BBI as a priority mm -hmm. to us as a country when we have this, uh, this pandemic that is really now sweeping uh, people away. Right. In this second wave of corona, it's really proved to people that corona is real and people have to take a lot of precaution and measures so that we don't uh, perish as fools. And uh, to that effect, then I think it is timely that as a country and as a leadership of this country also, mm -hmm. people get back to their senses and we right. get to see what are our priorities. Can we set our priorities right? Then right. we can now deal with it in totality. Right. Of course, m most people will question, if at all you listen to people who are speaking on ground, the local Manainji will try and um, tell you that these three leaders are playing with our minds. Today they say they are going to unveil, then they do some bit of um, meetings. And of course, they say, of course, we'll be, we, it has been postponed. And these um, theatrics, if I may use, uh, those kind of gimmicks, games between the three, that is uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta, we have the Deputy President, and also we have the ODM Chief, Raila Odinga. It seems that they know what exactly they are doing. Most Kenyans will say, these guys know what they are doing. Because you find out today, somebody comes out and says, I'm not in support of this, I want it to be done this way. The other goes saying, if it's not work, they give timelines of, we will look at, into this. Uh, we wake up one morning, things have been changed around. What does that exactly mean and where does it leave the local monarchy? It is unfortunate that we are able to see a lot of dishonesty in uh, the manner we play our politics and mm -hmm. leadership of this country. And it is unfortunate also to note that no leader has proved to be very honest to the people of this country. Right. And I wish we could have the interest of the people of this country come first mm -hmm. before any other interest. Then probably this, un this country would move into the right direction where the citizen would feel that they have space. If you look at a majority of people supporting uh, the process, they are not supporting the process and they don't understand what they are supporting. They are mm -hmm. supporting an individual. The same to those who are opposing. So we are caught up in a situation whereby we don't know where we are, where we are coming from and where we are going to. So it is important that uh, as a nation, first we realize where we are. Mm -hmm. We look at where we've come from and then we now look at where are we going. Then once we have combined the three, then we'll be able to sober up, come together, reason together and then move as a country. Of course, move yes. as a country. I want to take you to a bit of a close here. Uh, before the meeting, that was uh, last week on Thursday, before the meeting, the DP tweeted that a yes or no referendum contest was unnecessary and there was a possibility for a consensus. From your own uh, experience as a politician, Moshimiwa, do you feel like as a country as we, as we are right now, should we go for a contested or an uncontested referendum? Which one is the best one first? One, if you remember our previous uh, show with you, I did mention that it is unfortunate that the process has been taken for a political contest. Uh, mm -hmm. And it would have been proper if we would have initiated a national dialogue where people come, reason together, then we agree on fundamental issues right. that would really be for the good of this country. Mm -hmm. The risk of taking this process for um, a contested uh, referendum is that uh, we're going to polarize the country ahead of the coming general election, which mm -hmm. is a bit dangerous. 
We saw it in 2007 when we had a hotly contested referendum in 2005, which divided people along some lines that led to the hotly contested 2000 elections, which again erupted into chaos. So going by that at this particular moment is going to be a bit uh, hostile environment for us as a country. It's not going to be good for our economy. It is chasing away investors. And you'll realize today the country is experiencing a lot of uh, hardship because uh, the circulation of money to the common monarchy is like less than what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. People are really suffering down here. Right. The small business scale uh, traders are not really operating. And uh, to that effect, then it really calls for one thing. We have to think of how can we grow our economy? How can we stabilize the country mm -hmm. before we get to see how do we start politicking left, right? Right. Yes. But of course, those who are the proponents of the BBI issue are saying that uh, the things that you've mentioned about the economy, things around um, employment, improving people's business, of course, are all vested in uh, the way we play our politics. And of course, the BBI issue is here to streamline the way we do our politics. Every election cycle, we need to have some bit of consensus. If I win, I don't know works with the loser then things will be okay but uh, uh, when uh, the national secretariat who when uh, was being asked why they had to call off the signature collection launch they stated that uh, there was a late completion and publication of the constitution amendment bill clear that uh, this bbi thing is being rushed most Kenyans will tell you that these people are trying to make this thing go faster for their own I don't know reasons, but of course I want to ask you, Moshimiwa, why do you feel like do this the process of uh, changing the constitution? Why are we going so fast? Why do we even want to rush this process? One, if you see somebody saying that uh, the window is closed for any other proposal or other amendment proposal mm -hmm. as uh, had uh, been published, <clears throat> that is of uh, selfish uh, interest. interest. Mm -hmm. and uh, it would not be for the good of this country. Mm -hmm. I think it is proper that all views and opinion are accommodated. Mm -hmm. uh, let there no be question of time. And uh, if we rush with time, uh, not looking at uh, the fundamental and the interest of every citizen of this country, then again it would be uh, prejudice mm -hmm. to the rights of the people of this country. Right. And if you look at article um, in the chapter 4 of the Constitution of Kenya and the Bill of Rights, mm -hmm. really denying people opportunity to put their views and their views be heard fairly and squarely would be prejudiced to their rights. Mm -hmm. yes. Right. Of course, something good to note there on the issue about whether it's been rushed or not and some of the reasons why you feel they're being rushed. But staying still on the matters to do the BBI, uh, people are saying that maybe the president is blowing cold and hot at the same time. When he goes to the side of Raila Dinga saying that we are pushing this referendum thing going forward. When he comes, we see uh, some of the plans that he had set with Raila Dinga, including the collection of signature. He himself had to call it off after, the, after meeting uh, Deputy President William Ruto. People will ask why is the president even blowing hot and cold on the referendum issue? It's unfortunate that uh, after the handshake mm -hmm. in 2018, uh, the issues that came up were building bridges. And there were nine points agenda that were supposed to lead into the process of uh, the constitutional amendment. Right. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, if you look at the nine points and uh, the proposed uh, changes in the constitution, doesn't add up. Mm -hmm. And uh, not unless somebody convinced me how they're going to be implemented, then it's just a hoax. It's just a way of uh, we are luring citizens of this country by so quoting uh, the process with so nice words just to go vote. But the real intent and the issues surrounding BBI are for the leadership, not for the citizens of this country. However, it is also good to note that there are some uh, proposals that are being made that are beautiful for mm -hmm. the country. Mm -hmm. But then another question is, how sure are we that they're going to be implemented? If the current constitution that we voted for in 2010, right. there are sections that have never been complemented to date, yeah, and nobody is ready to probably affect them, then uh, where are we? Yeah. Because if it's in terms of laws, we have the best laws. Mm -hmm. 
then what are we lacking? We are lacking the goodwill from the leadership to, imp to implement these laws. Mm -hmm. So what is the surety that even after bringing all these in form of BBI, then they are going to be implemented? Right. Quite a question. Right. But of course, um, looking at uh, the BBI report one, before we even had the report two that was unveiled in Kisi County, well, people see that, um, uh, of course, there was, there was one of uh, the secretary, member of the secretariat had to come out and... Uh, raise some alarm on about whether the details in the report two were not included, uh, were not part of whatever they had agreed and they were being forced to sign uh, the document uh, before it was being unveiled. Those are some of the things that came out, of course, um, there was that discussion. But of course, uh, that something that comes out here in Moshimiwa is that it seems that the BBI report and the BBI, uh, all issues surrounding the BBI and um, a changing of the constitution was being hijacked by politicians. Take a good example. Maybe President Uhuru Kenyatta, with together with Nelo Dinga, had goodwill in trying and finding a solution to our contest of elections, every election cycle. But in between the line, something came up, and it was being hijacked. And the route at which it's taken, it's not right. That's why you see the president playing cold and hot. What do you say about that? Just like uh, if you look at uh, the process of uh, changing the whole constitution mm -hmm. from the one that was left with the colonial government, it would have been uh, proper if uh, a commission was appointed to oversee the process, just like when we were doing the overhaul of the, the constitution of mm -hmm. Kenya. Right. The risk of uh, having this process led by politicians or other political class is that every part, every segment of a political class will be pulling towards their side. Mm -hmm. That is why today I'm telling you, if you look at somebody supporting the bill or rather the, the draft, right. they're not supporting the draft, they're supporting an individual. If you take it like, for instance, the process being headed by the ODM leader, mm -hmm. Ayla Odinga, all the ODM grenades will be following and supporting without even a question. Right. Yeah, so the process will and why is it be, so, Moshimio? The process is not going to be constitutional and issue-based. It's going to be a political issue whereby people follow their law. Mm -hmm. Same to those who are opposing. So it's unfortunate that we leave it to the political class and we give it to be spearheaded by political leaders. I wish it would have been a process whereby it's a dignified process, spearheaded by technocrats, shared uh, through a commission that brings their report and makes changes and air the views and goes around doing civic education. If you look at this one, even nobody is bothered going around, even distributing the copies mm -hmm. of the draft bill, even uh, doing some civic education so that people understand what really they are about to vote for. It is absurd right. that politicians are pushing it for their own interest, mm -hmm. that they want it to go their own way. That is not the way to go as a country on a constitutional order. Right. Yes. But of course, Moshimiwa, that is something that, of course, has also bothered me so far. You find that we, we, the leaders that we elect, if we elect a leader on, um, let's say, an ODM ticket, whatever the ODM party leader says, it's a yes, sir. If he says we go right, we go right. Why is it so? Why does it always have to be that way? It's unfortunate that if you look at the manner in which leaders are elected in Kenya, people have to swear allegiance to political parties and lords. Mm -hmm. Very few people would speak their mind at those who come in as independent candidates or some came through small parties where there were no pressure and uh, there were no, a lot of push and pull in getting the ticket where they vied uh, with them. Mm -hmm. So again, it draws us back to how do we get our leaders? All right. The process under which we get our leaders will determine the integrity of the leaders that we are going to have. Mm -hmm. So again, that is another question. Of, that's another um, food uh, for thought that we really have to put in place. Right. We really have to see how we get leaders. Because the process of getting leaders will determine how these leaders will be, mm -hmm. how they will behave. Right. Because, for instance, like if you look at the way party primaries are conducted, with a lot of malpractice, yeah? that one really gives room for uh, impunity. Yeah. So once somebody is elected uh, with a lot of impunity, what makes them to stop being corrupt? Right. Yeah. Very true. That is the question. Quite a bit of statements from my guest here. Remember, you can be part of this conversation right, uh, right here that we are discussing matters to do with the BBI. What's the tech on whether should we go on a contested or uncontested referendum? Do you feel it's a priority as of now? 
Uh, most leaders have come out, stakeholders have come out to share in the views. Remember, you can also share yours right here via the number below your screen. Also, you can move to our social media platforms. Moshimiwa, yesterday the Muslim leaders had to speak about the BBI. And of course, according to the standard here, it's clear BBI is not a priority, say it's soup camp. Are you agreeing with whatever they had to say yesterday? Absolutely. And if, actually, it's not only Supkem. Mm -hmm. I saw Kalaji mm -hmm. also right. gave their voice the other week. Mm -hmm. I saw governors also gave their voice the other week, but with the conditions. Mm -hmm. That one clearly tells you that there's something amiss in this draft mm -hmm. that has to be rectified. Right. So if we all think sober as Kenyans, those who are calling for the draft being taken into a contested referendum without even changing a word or a sentence, or a full stop or a comma, mm -hmm. then are doing so for their own uh, um, interest. Yeah, it's all about selfish interest. Uh, I think in a proper manner, then it's a time that we really have to think together as a, a nation, mm -hmm. as a people, and we accommodate all views and opinion and put them together for the good of this country. Remember what we are doing is not for us today. We are doing something that is going even to impact the life of the future Kenyans, right. our kids, our grandkids. Mm -hmm. So I don't see the rush into working on this uh, draft and probably passing it the way it is in totality. Putting it in totality then would also bring another question. If it has to be taken for a referendum in totality, then let it not face a yes and no. A question only. Let us segment it so that every proposal meets a reaction. Right. So that we can pick what we want and we drop what we don't want mm -hmm. and then we can move on and then we can again work on the other remaining parts at an, another later right. date, not immediately. Of course. Right. But uh, during their speaking yesterday, they uh, urged the um, President Uru Kenyatta together with Red Odinga to try and consolidate other people's views, uh, to bring everyone on board. Every single view, idea should be incorporated. But do you feel like their plea will rest on some deaf ears? Because uh, according to the ODM chief, the, it's already sealed. You see, the most unfortunate thing is uh, the people who hijacked the process and uh, owned it as their own did not give room for the divergent opinions. Mm -hmm. It was dubbed uh, uh, different names. Yeah? Right. And so how again at this particular moment where when you brought it, people have read and for the sake of interest of every Kenyan in this country, mm -hmm. people have raised their voice and then you insist that it cannot work out. Then mm -hmm. it is not an all-inclusive process. Even it fails to beat the logic of uh, building bridges. It is not building any bridge. In fact, right. we are now breaking bridges <laughs> and I don't know where we're going to be after this. Mm -hmm. Yes, Very true. Mm -hmm. But of course, there was the question about funding and according to the soup came here, they said we are neither in the mental or financial state to amend the constitution. Please postpone the process. Let us address the COVID-19 issue first. Uh, you see, before we even thought of uh, going into a referendum and with an estimated budget, with an estimated budget of 14 billion, mm -hmm. it would have been proper that we look at even the welfare of uh, our frontline uh, soldiers in the fight against COVID-19. COVID if we can see our medics out there really complaining and not given attention, they are not paid, they are not given enough preparedness to fight this. Uh, uh, pandemic. We've seen many of them lost lives in the line of duty. How are we compensating them? How are we making sure that they also feel comfortable as they also help in the fight? Because if the if the health sector today downs their tools and they say mm -hmm. we are not going to do anything, then what is going to be? True. How are we going to be and how are we going to manage? Mm -hmm. If they've assisted us manage up to where we are today and they are now getting overwhelmed because they're not being assisted, they're not getting the enough support. And then we still have the audacity to even just upload, talk about BBI, collect signatures and think of spending a whooping 14 billion in just amending laws that are not even uh, pinching as such. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then it's really hypocritical of us as leaders of this country Turning a, bl turning a blind face on very cognizant issues that need immediate address with all the agency they deserve and really puts us in a pathetic situation. Very true. Right. And of course, something that confuses Kenyans even much on the issue about funding the referendum, we had uh, Raila Odinga stating that uh, at least the referendum, if it may use a lot of money, it will be close to $2 billion. 
and uh, the IBC the next morning comes out and say no 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 our budget if at all we were to uh, hold on for them right now we need close to 11 billion you see now uh, the issue about funding there comes in with uh, we're not even sure of how much we're going to spend on the referendum first. You see, on personal issues, you can zero down your budget to the much you feel is comfortable for you. Mm -hmm. But on a national uh, function, then there are guidelines. Yeah, I don't know which matrix that was used to arrive at the two billion. Eh? Mm -hmm. But then uh, <laughs> the only parameter that would be used. But of course, if you compare the referendum and the general election, quite uh, the referendum may be a little bit. Uh, absolutely, but then the only parameter that we use to gauge how much we use, mm -hmm. we've had referendum in this country before. Mm -hmm. How much did you spend? Right. And what are we about to spend? What is the difference? Have we reduced or have we increased? True. Then that would be the basis of argument. Mm -hmm. But just coming up with figures that are much below uh, the expected budget. And remember, this process is being uh, overseen by a, a constitutionally uh, put uh, in place body mm -hmm. that has the competence of running such kind of um, uh, affairs. Yeah. So a day, again, demeaning their opinion on the budget for the referendum is also not proper. Then it means we have a wrong body in place or we have a, lead, a wrong leadership in place. Very true. Quite some bit of thought there. Yeah. But last but not least on matters to do with the BBI, I want to talk about the issues around the gender on the BBI. And there is a bit of an article here from a gentleman uh, on the standard. He talks about taking women to the Senate where resource allocation is not conversed is akin to re re relegating <coughs> them to a dispensing position. Once again, it is about competition for resources and power between the men and women. Unfortunately, if all goes as planned, women will be the losers. You see, first, eh? mm -hmm. uh, all that taught Moshimiwa. Before then, we had that uh, the Women Parliamentary Association coming out in support of the BBI. And uh, in a meeting in State House last week, uh, the women leaders who attended the meeting include uh, the women from the Embrace team, uh, whereby they agreed to support the BBI and will go around the country to enlighten other women on how they will benefit from the proposal. So who is who? Uh, who is saying the truth here? The women here are saying that the BBI, of course, will one, bring some bit of benefit. One, you have to understand, the embrace is sodium. There's nothing like embrace. Embrace are sodium <laughs> grenades. Yeah? But of course, we have the likes of uh, that wa, is one. Wa, mudo, wa, uh, gadoni wa here. Yeah, that is now the extended handshake. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> BBI and the Jubilee part that right. went into handshake. Now, mm -hmm. Have become uh, bedmates. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, that's a marriage of convenience. But uh, notwithstanding, what I would wish, wish to say is that um, you see the issue of uh, uh, inclusivity, the issue of uh, gender parity, the issue of two-third gender rule. Mm -hmm. These are issues that have to be dealt with, not only with the mind or other view that we are trying to accommodate women. Mm -hmm. What if in the future we realize that women are now getting more elective posts than men? Right. And what will uh, be the, 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 the scenario. Mm -hmm. So we have to come up with a balance that accommodates both gender, not necessarily looking at women as the people who are less advantaged. Mm -hmm. Let us take let us look at them as equal competitors that at some point can also turn to be the most elected. So then we have to come up with a formula that is going to accommodate both gender in a manner that when whichever way things go at mm -hmm. that particular time, then the remedy becomes handy. True. But if we want like now to create uh, positions for women simply because we think women are less advantaged when it comes to elective positions, then I think we misled. We are not handling the issue as supposed and probably we are just uh, postponing a problem that probably again will dawn into us when time comes. So it is not uh, the time that we want to show that we have accommodated women. Mm -hmm. One, we want uh, to create positions that have meaning, that have value, that impact not just taking people to Senate to the tune of 94, just to please people that now we have the 94 senators of both gender. And then we have balanced now the gender uh, percentage compared to those ones who are in mm -hmm. the National Assembly. Right. I don't think it's uh, solving the problem. Let us get to where are we, how are we supposed to do it. It's a question of gender parity. We have uh, into the Constitution anchored how we're supposed to deal with this. We can even create an amendment that is going to 
oversee that uh, we deal with these issues of the gender parity. Mm -hmm. So then the question still remains, what if in future we have many elective women positions than men? Mm -hmm. Then again we are going to change the constitution. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a bit of uh, some thought there from Mwashimiwa and like the question that he's asking. But of course, uh, still staying on matters to do with um, uh, gender and water view and the BBI issue, I want us to bring it to a stop by looking at IEBC for a little bit. Um, according to the IEBC here, there was uh, uh, an interview done by the Standard last week uh, whereby Chebukat himself, who is the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission chairman, stated that uh, they cannot guarantee free and fair election simply because um, there is been some bit of interference from the politics and also they wanted some bit of uh, uh, things to be done before uh, they can assure the Kenyans for the uh, free and fair election. Number one being that commissions once current model of appointing chairperson and commissioners through recruitment by independent experts maintained. Secondly, Chebukati wants recruitment of commissioners to be staggered to facilitate transfer of knowledge and institutional memory. Third, removing existing commissioners and staff and varying their terms from six to four years and from permanent to three-year contract would affect election cycle. Remember, Moshimiwa, that every time our election cycle has a problem, and those who, of course, uh, uh, speak about it, they will tell you the problem starts with our uh, election body. That is the IEBC. It seems the elephant in the room here, we need to fix the IEBC first before even we can get to 2022. Echebukat himself has come out to say that they cannot uh, guarantee free and fair elections simply because of whatever they want to be addressed before anything is being done. What can you say about that? You see, one, uh, the proposals to have our political parties participate in the appointing of the commissioners mm -hmm. again throws us back where we were sometimes back, which did not work for us. That is why we ended up with what we have today. Right. And I think it is important that we also listen to uh, the players. Mm -hmm. Staggering of the commission so that they don't leave at once, so that we have transfer of knowledge from one, one, well, one period to another, another. Yeah. is also important. So that we don't have vacuum, so that we don't have a situation whereby people are uh, all um, like uh, new in uh, the process mm -hmm. and nobody is able to guide the rest. And then three, I think it is time that we empower the commission, make it an independent office that is free from interference from the executive and any other body. And then we can vote for a free and fair exercise mm -hmm. uh, conducted by a body that is mandated to do the process. Right. Very true. But of course, we hope that these are some of the issues that will be put in con into consideration going forward as we await for 2022, issues surrounding whether if um, there should, the, the, should be guaranteed fair and free elections. It's a wait and see situation. But last, last but not least, Mushimiwa, the president had said, stated during this uh, state of address that there should be no any public gathering going forward. The question is, should reggae be halted due to the rising COVID-19 numbers? What do you say about that? I think uh, we are not honest. Mm -hmm. uh, we are not honest to the contest, but that, um, one, we are not yet in an electioneering period. All right. So we don't need rallies. Mm -hmm. This is a time that people should concentrate on building the nation. Mm -hmm. uh, again, with the pandemic in place, Having been declared that there should be no gatherings, then it should remain so. But a situation whereby you see a clique or other a, a, a sector holds like gatherings, meetings, others are told not to, then again is a question that has to be put in place and then we should ask ourselves, uh, are we really serious with what we are doing and all that we say? Right. Or we are just playing some game that only the players understand, but spectators are left in a swimming pool that they doesn't, they're not able to apprehend. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're in support whether it, it should be halted, but to go, we should be put across. If halted, let it be halted. Mm -hmm. If there's any other way out, let it be clear. Let us have proper guidelines on how to go about the issues. Remember, as I mentioned, uh, the constitutional making process is um, 
is an affair that involves every citizen of this country. So nobody should be a winner and nobody should be a loser. Right. Very so true. on universal way of doing it, then everybody would emerge a leader and uh, a winner and everybody would emerge a loser. Very true. If it's not done properly. Mm-hmm. Right. I want us to switch gears now and look uh, at issues surrounding development. Mm-hmm. It's close to some bit of one year and some months before we get to an election again. We had leaders coming out during the 2017 with um, buckets full of uh, promises. And according to a report that was uh, last week, I think I read it on last week, it's that um, the Jubilee government has failed to meet its promises they had promised way back in 2017. Little has been done. And of course, speaking during the state of uh, uh, the uh, the address, President Uru Kenyatta touched a little bit on a number of issues that they've done. And of course, with the coming in the COVID-19 that has disrupted most of his priorities and now the priorities about handling COVID-19. But staying with the promises and how they have failed to meet uh, the promises. What can you say about that, Mishimu? You know, development can only take effect mm-hmm. if there's conducive atmosphere for doing business. Uh, there's good circulation of money and investors also doesn't shy away right but uh what we have seen since 2018 is that we've had a hostile uh, environment whereby investors doesn't feel safe for the investment so i think we've lost many investors to the neighboring countries even the local investors shy away they are not keen into investing especially where they are not sure of what Mm -hmm. is about to take place and that is about uh, that is brought about uh, by bad uh, b- bad way of handling our politics. Mm-hmm. We've had an endless political uh, period that doesn't give room for development. Even the promised for agenda for the president, I don't even I'm not even able to apprehend if either have taken. Uh, uh, off and uh, is it faring on anywhere? Well, she may have to say none has. I don't know if uh, they, are, they can be judged to be fairly taking off and probably being but able we've seen to be universal judged. Health care, Mishimiwa. But uh, talking about universal health care, we've only seen pilot projects that haven't been uh, rolled out for the country that are not effective, that are not being used effectively. Mm-hmm. If you go to hospitals today, I would talk of where I am. Go to Portrish today, go mm-hmm. to Post General today, go to Chanin Clinic today. Go to Chang- go, go to Magongo Clinic today. The situation in those health facilities are pathetic. Why are people resorting to going into uh, private uh, hospitals? Mm-hmm. Because we don't get proper care, because we don't get adequate care from our public health institutions. Right. This is brought about by what? One, the policy is put in place and the support that's supposed to be given to those institutions so that that service can be given to the common man is not there. Mm-hmm. If today our front soldiers fighting COVID are really complaining, this is a key government function. They are complaining about what? They are not given adequate supplies. They are not given protective gears. Right. They are even risking losing their lives. We've seen many of them lose lives. Mm-hmm. So how would such a kind of a probably program be a success if mm-hmm. even in this one we see people complaining if nhif has pulled off that they can't even support those who are dying of corona then we're supposed to support them very true right. it's unfortunate but the question is Moshimio, you've talked about the uh, the environment at which the conducive environment at which um we play at it but the question is the same same people that we elect are the ones who are supposed to create the conducive environment what difference would it have made if, uh, for example, what, if I may ask you now, what do you think needs to be done if we are to try and find a conducive environment? You see, this country is governed by laws. And we have all the laws that are supposed to guide us in all the aspects of governing this country. Mm-hmm. But they are being neglected. There's uh, that kind of impunity that people do what they want, that supports them, that supports their cronies, that supports their natives. Right. But when the opposite does, then it is an offense that people should be jailed, mm-hmm. which is quite unfortunate. So I wish we be people who love this country, who respect the rule of law and uphold the rule of law. Right. Then everything will take course mm-hmm. and we shall not have issues that we move 
forth and back off without having even clear direction that is like we are not even sure what we are supposed to do mm-hmm. yes so we need leadership in this country what leadership. is missing in this country is leadership, leadership. we have right. the best laws that if applied with goodwill from the leadership then i don't think we could be lagging behind and be complaining of all this that we see around very true but of course maybe we can be focusing much on how the jubilee government has failed in meeting its, its promises but of course trickling down to our county and sub county levels we also have those people whom we elected and of course it's now close to uh, they've taken a bit of 4 years nothing has not, nothing much has been done looking at our constituency constituency if you walk around here and then do some bit of um, a vox pop with people I'll tell you i really don't think anything has been done there is little to see and to say this and this and this has been done in the 4 years time do you feel it's something that we are um, taking it from up, up there bringing it down the government has failed in implementing the policies that it had failed but that one doesn't uh, give uh, an express excuse to all the uh, devolved units to having not uh, performed mm-hmm. and i'll give that one as an example having gone through the last um, ranking of uh, performance of county governments mm-hmm. I don't think Jubilee worked for a county like Kisumu to be ranked number 4. Right. That was the efforts of Kisumu as a leadership. Mm-hmm. Yes. I don't think Jubilee worked for Makueni to be ranked number 3. Those were the efforts of the county government of mm-hmm. Makueni and its leadership. So the question here is as a leadership all those who are elected to carry on the duties of managing this country and the services to the people. Right. Are they really doing their work? Mm-hmm. What is their duty? What is their mandate? Do they really understand? Are they really leaders who came to serve the people or they get they got there for their own interest? Mm-hmm. Then now that again puts uh, the electorate uh, to some point. Uh, do they really understand whom they elected? do they really understand what they want mm-hmm. are they really changing to get better people to manage or they are just going to end up with the same people those are questions that have to cut across board right. as much as we focus on the leadership then let us also focus on those who elect people then how can we tailor the system whereby we have one bad person being repeated uh, be being elected repeatedly is it our making and if it is not our making how can we curtail this right. people have to change there has to be some element of behavior change mm-hmm. in the manner in which we elect our leaders mm-hmm. we have to look at what are the pertinent issues that are supposed to guide us in electing our leaders mm-hmm. are we still going to go by the party politics are we still going to go by the coalition politics are we still going to lean on our tribal lines are we still going to lean on our religious lines mm-hmm. if we can really uh, discuss all this in open then we come together and discuss as a nation as a country i think we are going to make a move and we are going to make a change right we should be looking at uh, the election that passed in uh, uh, the united states of america most people anticipated that trump was going to um, beat uh, biden but of course things came came as it is right now and people uh, reading on the comments of people they like the way the united states voted mm-hmm. it's not about money it's not about um political party politics it's about a person himself as it is do you see that in kenya it will reach a time will begin changing our mindset in terms of the way we vote i want to believe that at some point we'll have to be there but a lot have to be put in place mm-hmm. we have to really reevaluate our system we really have to reevaluate our way of getting leaders right we really have to put a lot of um, control in uh, the manner in which uh, political parties are registered and the manner in which they are handled mm-hmm. then we shall reach there because if you look at uh, the united states of america they only have two parties mm-hmm. Me, i was born and since i was born i have only found america having two parties yeah. only the democrats and the republicans and the republicans mm-hmm. and leadership have always revolved between the two mm-hmm. it's just a question of policy and leadership mm-hmm. nothing else right. today we take republican we give them an opportunity they fail to deliver somebody comes up again from democrats assure us with good policies we give them opportunity they deliver we re-elect them and we move on like that mm-hmm. and so it's also possible for us as kenyans 
we have if you look at countries like uh, south africa they have the same they don't have so many parties mm-hmm. and they've had like consistent parties that have been in place if you look at tanzania the same uh, and so then it calls for us to really reevaluate put in place laws that are going to govern political parties and the manner in which we arrive at electing leaders right and then we shall be home and dry but before we are there then it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of work that has to be done mm-hmm. you have to really think we have to really reconsider our, pos- our positions both as a citizens and as the leaders of this country and if we are really serious that we want to see this country grow then we have to do a lot because Kenya cannot be the same Kenya or even our Kenya it was 30 years ago true when i was growing there are benefits that i saw that are not there today that i keep on wondering are mm-hmm. we progressing or are we retrogressing true yeah when I was going to school, I was given free exercise books on mm-hmm. arrival, I was given a pencil, I was given a ruler, I was given a rubber, and they were given periodically. Mm-hmm. In the school staff room, or other school office, there were a bunch of stationaries new. We did not used to buy these things. Today, you have to buy. In this era today, you have to run away with your child from public school to private school. Mm-hmm. Those days, public schools were very few, and very few people opted to take their kids to private schools. Mm-hmm. So it really bothers me. Are we really progressing as a country or are we retrogressing? Quite a question. But Manishimiwa, somebody maybe specifically those who are in Changamwe here and the constituents of Changamwe are watching you and they are saying, okay, we've heard what Manishimiwa is saying, but going forward, come 2022, what is Manishimiwa bringing on board? Because uh, we've seen leaders that have come out, they've spoken, little has been done. What difference will he make if at all we uh, give him a chance? The paramount difference that is required is leadership. Right. With all structures put in place and all the policies, because a member of parliament doesn't come in with new policies. Mm-hmm. We're going to use the same same policies that are there, the government policies. Right. All the guidelines that are there in all sectors, mm-hmm. both from the legislative assembly to the local point of leadership where we have also uh, an amenity of leading. Yeah, mm-hmm. And... Uh, in that, if we can really uphold and underline the term leadership, expound it and discuss it in depth, then we'll be able to arrive at the answers that we are looking for. I mean it, much more. Mm-hmm. So, you see, leadership is vast. It's not just being at the helm. It's just not being elected. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Leadership is a question of standing as a leader and doing what is required of a leader. True. Yes. Right. And it comes with merit. It is not just given. Mm -hmm. And for you to merit, you have to work for it. You have to prove. And the merits are there. Mm -hmm. So the scorecard for a good leader is in place. It shall only be marked and take that, yes, it's been implemented, it's been done, it's been approved. Right. And that's it. Quite. Mm -hmm. Some good words from Moshimiwa Freddy Kokola. If you feel that he deserves to be your member of parliament, specifically for the people around Changamwe, then you do be the judge. Do what's supposed to be done. Come 2022. As he has spoken, leadership is about what you can do and the merit is here and can be seen. Those are some of uh, the good words from my guest. Thank you so much. Of course, time is not on our side. Mushimio, if you have something to say, last but not least. Mm, one, I'm grateful for the show. Mm-hmm. It's a one that I think is uh, uh, giving our viewers and our locals a good opportunity to listen to us and probably make their own judgment Mm -hmm. on us. And two, uh, I think it's a critical moment uh, for us as a nation to really reconsider our positions Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, take the right direction at the right time when required of us. Otherwise, I'm grateful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Moshimiwa. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Feel free and any time to come on board. Right, on that note, we want to wrap our show. Goodbye. See you tomorrow, same time, same place.